Thank you for joining us. I'm Ashley Godwin. Here are the top stories we're following for you. It's election day, a closer look at the races here in Arkansas and across the country as runoffs come to an end. Plus, the Little Rock School District is paying a quarter of a million dollars to get its computers back from hackers. What we know about the attacks later. And if you're looking to take a vacation this holiday season, we'll check out some credit cards that experts say have the best rewards programs. But first, meteorologist Scott Cover joins us right now. Scott, it's December. It's 70 degrees. It doesn't it doesn't correlate. It doesn't match up. Unseasonably warm out there, Ashley. You're exactly right. We had a warm front. It lifted through the state earlier this morning, and it's really that warm front that actually cleared all of that fog that was blanketing most of the state. Still tracking some of that this afternoon in northern Arkansas, but as you'll see, most of us uh, are dry out there. A couple of scattered showers here and there. Better chances of rain later this evening. Here are those temperatures where we've seen the warm fronts. Well, most of us are in the 70s, 72 degrees right now in the capital city uh, north of that front in places like Clinton, even Batesville. It's a bit cooler out there, mid 50s, even some low 60s. That front will continue meandering around, keeping rain chances in our forecast, not just today, but really over the next couple. We shouldn't get much warmer out there than it is now. We'll largely be in those low 70s. You'll notice the further south you go, the warmer it's going to get. The further north from the metro that you find yourself, probably going to be in the 60s. In terms of what is to come, rain chances not only today this evening but continuing into your Wednesday and you guessed it on Thursday a very active weather pattern how much rain can you expect between now and the weekend I've got that answer and more coming up in that extended forecast THV 11 is your election central and today polls are open in dozens of runoff races across the state. 16 towns are voting on mayors for election day. You can see the full list here on your screen. Drew County is the only place voting on a sheriff's race. Runoffs are between the top two candidates after neither received more than 50% of the vote in the November general election. And people in Georgia have endured months and months of political ads on TV and online. But today is the day voters will decide who will represent the Peach State in the United States Senate. Skylar Henry is in Atlanta, Georgia with more details. People in a Marietta, Georgia diner cheered as Herschel Walker entered for the final campaign event of the 2022 Georgia Senate runoff race. The former Georgia football star shook hands, took pictures, and delivered a couple of predictions. We're going to get out and win this election. Herschel Walker is going to be your senator, and we're going to get things changed. Out uh, of Georgia, Ogo Ohio State game, final score, Georgia going to win by seven. Democratic incumbent Senator Raphael Warnock didn't have any football predictions, but he too says he's going to win. The issues are too urgent, the stakes are too high. And the differences between me and Herschel Walker are way too wide uh, for us to sleep through this election. I feel good, uh, but we're going to press all the way to, to victory. Nearly two million Georgians have already cast their ballots during early voting, but both sides say they still need strong voter turnout in order to ensure victory. And they're hoping the chilly, rainy weather doesn't keep voters away. I feel like uh, things are a toss up these days um, what things you expect would be uh, in the bag you're not sure you know it could go either way I think just getting another voice in there Republican voice so I'm for that the balance of power in the Senate is already set with Democrats in control but this race will still impact what each party will be able to do in the Senate Skyler Henry CBS News Atlanta In a THV 11 update, the Little Rock School District is paying a quarter of a million dollars after a cyber attack on its computer network. That money is how much it negotiated with the hackers to get its systems back. Here's what we know. We just learned that last night the ransomware attacks was discovered November 11th. The district says hackers told them not to announce it publicly or it could have made things even worse. Outside experts who were brought in to contain the problem learned some data was taken, but they don't know exactly what it was. Last night, the school board approved the $250,000 settlement agreement to resolve the network issue. There are still unanswered questions about what this means, but Superintendent Dr. Jamal Wright says they can't answer everything just yet. LRSD was advised by independent computer forensic experts to make every effort not to publicize 
what was happening due to the potential of more data being stolen. District leaders say they'll eventually release more information, but can't say how long it will take. And meanwhile, dozens of county offices across the state are still without their computer systems after another cyber attack. We first told you about the attack last month. It's impacting counties using servers run by apprentice information systems. The White County Assessor's Office is just one of the offices crippled by the cyber attack. Like many, they've had to go back to pen and paper to get work done. Slowly, systems are coming back online, but there's no timetable when everything will be back up and running. And officials in North Carolina said it could be days before power is restored after two substations were shot up over the weekend. It's chilly there too, a tough time for thousands to be in the dark. Officials are trying to find a motive for what they call a deliberate attack on local infrastructure. Mark Strassman is there in Carthage, North Carolina. Traffic lights are out, generators are on, and people in Moore County, North Carolina, feel challenged by crisis. It's devastating. Authorities say someone with a gun broke through a gate and intentionally opened fire at two power substations in Moore County. What's the temperature in the house? Right now it's probably about 55. Steve and Meg Wilkins are bracing for another uncomfortable night. Tick you off? Absolutely. Uh, this is not what I wanted to be doing today, stringing power cords, eating cold ham, you know, and uh, trying to live by flashlights in the evening. Roughly 35,000 customers are without power and will be for most of the week until crews repair and replace equipment. Protecting critical infrastructure like our power system must be a top priority. In January, CBS News obtained a bulletin from the Department of Homeland Security warning that domestic violent extremists continue to plot credible, specific plans to attack electricity infrastructure. The U.S. has 55,000 substations. Earlier this year, 60 Minutes profiled how lightly protected and vulnerable they often are. There's a very few number of substations you need to take out uh, in the entire United States to knock out the entire grid. Turns out, taking out fewer than 20 critical substations all at once could black out the entire country the way Moore County looks today. This kind of attack raises a new level of threat. We will be evaluating ways to make sure that we harden our infrastructure to prevent future damage. The FBI has joined state and local officials investigating who's behind all this. As for restoring power, fingers crossed, could be Thursday. Mark Strassman, CBS News, Carthage, North Carolina. Scott County Sheriff Randy Shores is due in court today on the same day he's up for re-election in a runoff. Shores and former Waldron police officer Omar Gonzalez are both charged in connection with an arrest earlier this year. Gonzalez, who resigned this past May, faces three counts of third-degree battery. Shores is charged as an accessory. Back in October, he told us he was looking forward to his day in court. Sorry that Scott County got put in a bad light and... Uh... I think the outcome will be good when we go to court because I will. I am innocent, didn't do anything wrong. If convicted, they each face up to a year in jail. And we're learning new details in the arrest of Johnson County Sheriff Jimmy Stevens as now the FBI is getting involved. We first told you yesterday Stevens was arrested in Crawford County over the weekend on multiple drug and gun charges. New video shows the sheriff being booked into the Crawford County Jail Saturday night. We've now learned an FBI special agent informed a state trooper that Stevens had just left a home the FBI had been watching in a corruption and narcotics investigation. When the trooper pulled pulled over Sheriff Stevens in his patrol car. A search reportedly turned up oxidone pills, hydrocodone, and a small amount of marijuana. Stevens posted $25,000 bond on Sunday. He'll go before a Crawford County judge next Wednesday. And with the holiday season now in full swing, the TSA is demonstrating which holiday themed items such as food and gifts will be allowed in carry on luggage and which items must be packed in checked luggage. Along with these recommendations, they'll also provide updates regarding items that are not allowed at all. 
Airlines, hotels and credit cards offer loyalty and reward programs where travelers can earn points. The travel site The Points Guy says some are better than others and is all out with its annual winners. Elise Preston has a look. Whether you're looking for a flight or booking a room, Brian Kelly and Nikki Kelvin from The Points Guy tell CBS Mornings some brands have better loyalty programs than others. Among airlines, Delta earns the top spot for perks like the ability to use points on partner airlines, miles that never expire, and free ticket changes on most domestic flights. Most airlines might give you a voucher when you wanted to cancel during the pandemic. Delta went a step further in so many cases, they'd actually give you your money back. Marriott Bonvoy is the top choice for hotel loyalty programs, and selection is a major reason why. The company offers 30 different brands with locations all over the world. They have everything from the really fun, smaller brands to the big, swanky ones. The Points Guy says people looking to earn travel rewards on their credit card should go with the Chase Sapphire Preferred Card. Users can earn extra points when paying for travel or dining, and there are extra protections. Chase actually has flight delay and cancellation coverage. So as long as you use that Sapphire card to pay for your flight, even if the airline doesn't cover your hotel, if you get stranded, your credit card will. Brian Kelly says that could come in handy during the upcoming holiday travel rush, which is always unpredictable. Elise Preston, CBS News, New York. And construction is underway on the world's largest radio telescope. After the break, a look at what scientists will be able to discover. Scott? Sure has been a dreary day all across Arkansas. No end in sight. In fact, the rain returns to the state by tonight. Very well could be a wet next couple of days. I've got the very latest on our rain chances when THB 11 News at Noon returns.